Okay, so, okay, so welcome stop. to lesson or lecture sure. ATA. AT. So I'm calling this one A, and I'll call the next one B, um, just to align with the PowerPoints, where um, usually this is kind of a lecture that kind of spans two classes. Um, and today we're going to talk about the energy grade line and the hydraulic grade line. So commonly abbreviated as HGL, EGL. Okay, so um, we're going to define and explain the physical meaning of these two HGL and EGL, and then I'm going to construct them for various fluid systems. So today is actually going to be um, more conceptual. Um, I don't think we're going to do any actual math unless you consider um, adding a few uh, little things here and there uh, math. But um, so um, what I want to consider um, with this is I want to consider this quantity um, P on gamma, P on gamma plus Z plus V squared on 2G. Okay. And so um, you'll recognize this as, you know, if this were Bernoulli, we would say this equals a constant. And so you would, you know, you put little subscripts ones or twos and you would work this way. Or if this were the energy equation, you know, you recognize that basically we have this quantity again. Um, but we include things like head loss and pumps and turbines and things like that. And, you know, some alphas. Um, and so what I want you, what I want to think about is I want to think about this as, um, kind of as being its own quantity. And uh, we're going to, you know, and, and I kind of, I mean, I didn't really derive the energy equation, but I kind of like to think about this as like the total energy of the system. Okay. And so the energy is kind of coming in uh, three different forms, you know, so um, uh, these two are potential energies. Okay. And this one is a kinetic energy. Okay. And so typically um, we look at these two and we call these two the piezometric head, piezometric head, which I think, you know, at this point, you know, I've probably said it a couple of times in class um, or maybe, you know, even just on these recordings and it's kind of gone in in one ear and out one the other and it's kind of like, well, whatever, you know, um, it's not something that we typically think about very much. Um, and so, you know, basically the piezometric head is the potential energy of the system and the kinetic energy is obviously kinetic energy. So the, the velocity head um, is the um, kinetic energy of the system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to back all this up. And I want to think about this. Uh, I don't want to get rid of that line. Um, and I want to think about all this, about these three terms, when it comes through like flow through a pipe. Okay. So we want to think about the total energy of this pipe. Okay. And so... I'm going to start and I'm going to do um, what I think is the easiest of these three. Okay, so the easiest of those three is if I have a datum. Okay, so if we call this the datum. Okay. Okay, so once we have a datum, we're going to um, consider, you know, well, what is the elevation? Okay, this is the easiest one of our uh, terms. And so we typically just take it at the center, center line of the pipe. So I'm going to take it like right there. Okay. I say, well, what's the elevation right there? Well, it's the distance between the datum and that point. Okay. So that's Z. Okay. So that is a measure of the potential energy. If that thing goes up, then it has more Z. If it goes down, it has less Z. Um, so that is one of our forms of potential energy. If we wanted to know the pressure at that point, well, there's a way to kind of drive at the pressure. And that is to put in a piezometer, okay? And assuming I could draw a straight line, um, we could imagine that, you know, I would, I would have to, you know, poke a hole in that pipe, which I'm not going to draw, but I think you can imagine it. Okay, and you can imagine that the, the, flu, the liquid in here would rise some height in that thing. And that height, you know, as we know from hydrostatics, that height is going to be um, proportional to the pressure, okay? And so it's going to be... Like this it's going to be p on gamma okay and if you don't remember that or um you know you can always say well what's the pressure right here oh well it's you know because it's hydrostatic above it it's gamma h so p equals gamma h so if you rearrange that you get p on gamma is that height okay so that gives us this so right here from here down to here okay that's our piezometric head okay piezo metric head okay which is kind of a you know um what do you call a term that you know i don't really use very much but um 
Anyway, so then I might want to be able to get at what is this thing? What is, how do I drive, drive at the kinetic energy of the system? Okay, and so the way that we get to the kinetic energy is I draw, want to create one of these um, pipes. Um, and some of you guys may remember this. Okay, so this one, you'll notice is turned into the flow. So because it is turned into the flow, that point right there is a stagnation point. Okay, and that's why they call these tubes um, pitot stagnation tubes or stagnation tubes or, you know, any number of other things. But what happens is the uh, velocity moving down here gets to there and now it stops moving. So as the fluid moves, it, as the fluid approaches that stagnation point, the velocity head gets converted into extra pressure, essentially extra pressure. Okay, so this is even higher than it was next a second ago. Okay, because it has the same pressure that we had here, but now it's got an additional amount of pressure, which is the, uh, oh, oh, let's undo that. Um, which is the, you know, you're a real jerk. Can you just give me white? Okay, thank you. Okay, so from here down there, which is V squared on 2G. Okay. And that, that velocity right there is not the velocity in the tube, obviously, because it's not flowing there. That velocity represents the velocity in the free stream down here. Okay. So if we take these three terms, okay, one, two, three, and they're all stacked up on top of each other, right here, assuming I could draw it right through here, okay, this would be the total energy of the system, okay, TE. Okay. Um, I'm going to undo that because I really don't like that red color. Um, let's, um, let's see if we can't get a, here, let's use green. Okay. So right here, okay, that's the total energy. Okay, and the total energy has a, uh, has a special name, okay, and we're going to call it the energy grade line. Okay. So at this point, the total energy is this. And what's nice is, you know, what I just did, I just kind of created it by thinking about the Z and thinking about the P on gamma and thinking about the V squared on 2G. And what I'm going to want you to be able to do ultimately is to think about it um, not necessarily using, uh, not necessarily thinking about all those things individually, but just kind of by thinking about what's going on, okay? And, and you're going to have to be able to kind of mentally take it apart and put it back together, et cetera, et cetera. So um, I'm going to give you kind of a, an example here and move over here, okay? And I want to think, oh, well, I didn't tan, plan on making that bigger. Oh, wait, let me let me go back over here one thing. Okay, so this, this T-E-E-G-L is right here, and then right here, um, uh, um, give me this, give me, we'll do green again. Uh, maybe we'll do yellow. Let's see if yellow will stand out. Okay, is right here. Okay, this is the H-G-L. Hydraulic grade line. Okay, you notice the hydraulic grade line only tracks the potential energy side of this whole thing. Okay, so the hydraulic grade line is Z and P on gamma. So this is the hydraulic grade line. And the energy grade line, uh, I don't know what happened to my green. There it is. And the energy grade line is the whole thing. Okay, so, um, so one of the important um, equations, that, well, one of the only equations that comes out of this is that EGL minus HGL equals V squared on 2G, which we should be able to see graphically from what I just did down there. Okay, so uh, we're going to talk about that uh, in great depth today. Um, so let's go over here. And I want to consider this system here. Okay, so here is a pipe um, down at the bottom. I know there's a lot of lines here. This is very noisy. And so we're going to kind of try to... Um, I'm going to try to walk you through it. Okay, so first thing, here's a pipe. Okay, um, if I had done this, you would have seen one of these on the end and one of these on the end. Okay, and so we're looking at these points, and we're looking at uh, point one right here, okay, and point two right here. They're in red, but I'm kind of highlighting them in green. It's not really showing up very well. Um, okay, here's point one, and here's point two. Okay, and it doesn't really matter what the one or twos or anything like that, but... Um, Let's just, you know, just bear with me. 
Okay, so the Zs are easy, right? So we have some imaginary uh, datum. Here's our Z. Here we have an imaginary datum, so here's our Z. Okay, in fact, they've already labeled them for us, but you know, I'm just kind of, you know, going to work with work. I'm just going to kind of do it again. Okay, so here's Z. Okay, P on gamma. Well, we put in this um, this piezometer right here, so you can see just how high the water rises in the piezometer. That's our P on gamma. Same thing over here, just how high the water rises in the, in the uh, piezometer, that's our P on gamma. And then they have these, uh, these uh, static tubes, or these stagnation tubes, and it rises a little bit higher, and that tells us our V squared on 2G. Okay, same thing happens here, V squared on 2G. Okay? So in this system, as they have it drawn, notice the energy grade line is from Z, is from the datum, all the way up to if we add those three quantities. And also notice that in this case, the energy grade line is completely flat, okay, which implies that there's no energy loss. Okay, So for this particular problem, what's interesting is that this thing has no head loss, okay, so or no friction loss, or no, they, they assume, this is assumes in viscid flow, okay? Maybe that's, you know, obviously that's impossible, but for this, the way it's drawn, um, this assume, assumes inviscid flow. Um, a couple of things that I, I think are, are worth pointing out here. Um, notice um, a few things. First of all, the velocity on this particular problem here versus here. Okay, notice the velocity um, decreased. Okay, so this one is lower than, than, the, than the one on the left. Okay, why is it lower? Well, it's lower because the because this pipe here is larger. Okay, cool. Okay, notice that the um, the Z. Okay, Z here is bigger. Okay, Z is bigger. Okay, than it is over there. Now, why is that? Because because the pipe. Well, because it flowed kind of uphill a little bit. Okay. Now into those things. Now remember, if this is so, this is kind of a Bernoulli problem. If all of these three things have to be constant, so if the sums have to be constant, okay, basically we're assuming inviscid. Um, well, then the p on gamma is just kind of like this leftover thing right here. Okay, and in this case, the p on gamma decreased. Okay, it went down. Okay, and you might say to yourself, why did it go down? The velocity went down, so the P on gamma should go up, right? Usually, if the velocity goes down, the pressure, the pressure goes up, usually. Okay, and that's true. Um, and that's true. But, but down here, okay, we have the opposite effect going down, which is usually the velocity, not the velocity, the, okay, if the Z goes up, then the pressure goes down, okay, also usually. Okay, so these two things were competing against each other. And in this case, you know, without any numbers and, you know, without knowing how to do it, but it looks like ultimately this thing went down, okay? And that's one of the nice things about this is that you can, you can get at what the pressure is anywhere in a pipe just by knowing your Z and by knowing this, okay? Of course, this assumes, you know, inviscid flow, which is usually not going to be the case. Okay, so let's talk about what that means if it's not inviscid. Okay, so I'm going to go back over here. And I want to think about this particular, oh, son of a, I want to think about this particular pipe. And I want to think about what happens if I put another one of these um, a little ways down um, the pipe. Okay, so um, I'm just going to install another one of these, like, um, I don't know, right here. Okay, so there's a, there's a, there's a piezometer, and then here's a stagnation tube. Okay, to the best that I can draw it, right? Okay, so those two are measuring the same spot. Now, what's interesting is... We have to think about all of these terms. I'll do this in green, just like the one on the left, so that um, it'll stand out. Okay, so the Z, obviously, 
the same spot. Okay. Now you're like, okay, well, how do we get P on gamma? I mean, you know, we couldn't really get it on the left either. I just kind of made up a height. But one thing that I know is that uh, V squared on uh, 2G, V squared on 2G here is the same as it is here, right? Okay, because the area is constant. Okay, the area of the pipe is constant. Okay, so that's just continuity. Okay, so that means this height here is going to be the same. Wait a second, I think I'm getting a little ahead of myself. Okay, we want to think about the, let's 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 back up just one second. Let me, yeah, let's just back up one second, and let's think about this total energy. So this total energy, as we move down the pipe, it's going to decrease. Okay, and it's going to decrease some amount. So let's suppose the total energy is going to end up at a spot like right, let's say it ends up right here. Okay, so the total energy now is here. Okay, we're going to call that the EGL, okay, or the total energy. Okay, we're never going to call it the total energy after this. It's always going to be the EGL. But it's the total amount of energy. And it went down because if this were a viscid system, it would be right there. But this is not an inviscid system, so instead, oh, son of a, so instead, I'm going to try to draw this straight. Um, it slope downward. Okay, now assume that that's a straight line. Okay, so this right here, that is head loss. It lost some energy due to friction. Okay, so now I'm going to work backwards. So I got the Z, I got Z, boom. Okay, V squared on 2G. This is going to be the same in both places, so whatever it was on the right, it's going to be about that on the left. So I'm going to put it um, as best I can draw it. Go down to about uh, maybe there. Okay, so this is V squared on 2G. Okay, which leaves, which now means that the only leftover bit is going to be, um, let me draw the water in here. Okay, so that means the water is going to be driven up to here. Okay, and the only leftover bit is what's left over in between. So that's P on gamma. Okay. And so what's kind of interesting here is that if we do that, then right here, this is our HGL. Okay, so this is our HGL. Okay. So notice, um, you know, a, a few important things, okay? So first of all, we lost energy, okay, due to head loss, due to friction, okay? And, of and in this case, probably if this is a pipe and there's nothing, you know, the roughness along the pipe walls is the, con is the same and the area remains the same, this is going to be linear, okay? I can't, I didn't draw it linear because I'm, I'm bad at drawing, at least on this thing, um, but that's the idea, okay? So that means we lost energy, however, our datum, I mean, our Z was constant, and our V squared on 2G was constant, which means that the way that we lost energy was in pressure. Okay, it was the only thing I, that I could give. Okay, the other two terms were constant. We gained or we lost energy due to, due to head, so um, the pressure had to go down. Okay, and that's what's going to happen pretty often. It's going to be a pretty common thing is to lose uh, pressure head. Okay, and so that's just an important consideration. So for the rest of this class, I'm going to show you pictures. These are all coming from the textbook, your textbook, I think. Um, um, I got them from uh, Professor Barbe, who you all will have, well, some of you will have next semester. Your, your civil engineers will have them next semester. Um, but I'm pretty sure I got them from this textbook. And so um, I'm just going to kind of walk through them, and I'm going to draw all over them. And uh, this can be a, a confusing lecture the first time you see it, so I'm kind of glad we're recording it. Um, but we're 20 minutes in. My guess is, um, my guess is this one's not going to take the full hour. But let's we'll see. Okay, so you can find descriptions of these in the textbook if you uh, zoom in. If you um, oh, let's go, come here. Come on, down you go, down you go. You can do it. Okay, good. Okay. So typically, one thing to be aware of is that typically. Um, the EGL and HGL, usually the uh, EGL is a solid line and the HGL is a, um, is a 
is a dotted line. Um, they just used like the same kind of dotting here. It's pretty unusual when you have a printer at your disposal. But anyway, um, so I want to talk about, so right here we're in this tank, okay? And I want to talk about the EGL and the HDL in the tank. Okay, so what's happening is this tank is being drained. The flow is coming through down here, um, and it's moving all the way to the right where it's going out into the atmosphere here. Okay. So uh, they've already labeled the datum for us, which is very nice. And I want to think about um, I want to think about two points in this tank. So a point right here, and I want to think about a point at the surface. Okay. And I want to think about the energy and the EGL and the HDL at those points. Okay, the easiest one is the one at the surface, which actually they've already kind of drawn that for us. So let's just draw that right here. Okay, notice the, the pressure at the surface is zero gauge. Cool. So there's no pressure. And it's just got elevation going the whole way. So it's just got Z. Sweet. Okay. Now also notice um, it has no velocity, right? Because the, the tank here is is large, um, and so, you know, the Tahoe assumption or the tank assumption, there is no, there's no velocity head. So this thing is, this spot right here on the surface of the water, that is um, P on gamma plus Z plus uh, V squared on 2G, all of it right there. Now, what if I wanted to know where is EGL right here? Okay, well, the Z goes to here. Okay, that would be Z. But then the pressure right here, well, that's P on gamma. Uh, okay, the pressure here equals gamma H, right? Because this is hydrostatic. So if that's the case, then the pressure head, if I can rearrange this right here, I could rearrange it algebraically, and I would end up with P on gamma equals the depth, right? So this H right here, is P on gamma. Okay, so notice Z plus P on gamma still brings me up to the surface of the water. Okay, so this surface right here, and of course there's no velocity at that point either, so this surface is both the EGL and the HGL for all the points down in here. Okay, so wherever I put a point. Okay. All right, so cool. All right, so now what happens as we start approaching, so one thing I want to warn us about, and there's a few things that I want to think about, is I want to think about um, loss. Okay, we're going to lose energy right here. Okay, we're going to lose energy. I'm going to assume that there's no energy loss where we're measuring. There's no measurement energy loss. Okay, so let's ignore that. But there's going to be energy loss all along the pipe wall, and all along the pipe wall. Wherever there's movement, there's going to be loss. Okay, technically there is probably a loss here at the exit, but we don't normally deal with that. Okay, so we're just going to, um, we're going to ignore that. Okay, and so now I want to only think about the EGL. Okay, I only want to think about the energy um, loss, okay, the energy. Um, and I'm going to say right now that uh, the book screwed this up a little bit because, um, they did not include a loss right here. Okay, there should be a loss of energy right here. There should be head loss right here. Uh, H lowercase l. Okay, and you're like, well, why is he using a lowercase l? Well, usually because we break the head loss term, and I'll show you this more uh, next week, but we break it up into friction and minor losses. Okay, and this is a minor loss. And all along this pipe wall is a is a is a friction loss. Um Anyway, so, um, so really what should have happened here is something like this, okay? Um, the energy should have gone down a little bit right here, okay? So, the, so I'm just chase right now I'm just going to trace the EGL, okay? It goes down um, because there's a loss right here, okay? So it loses energy as it, as it goes through that, uh, as, it, as it goes from here to here. Okay. And if I zoom in on that, um, the reason it loses energy, okay, if I drew it like this, is because the flow, first of all, you're having to redirect and turn the, turn the flow, which, which requires energy. But then as it comes in, if we imagine it's got some momentum until it like finds its way 
to like all, oh, this is a really bad drawing, but let's imagine these are the walls. Okay, it's just gonna, until eventually, it's going like this, but in the meantime, there's like a little recirculation zone in here. Okay, and that recirculation causes a loss of energy. Okay, you can imagine that the shear in there is really, really high, and that's causing a lot of energy to be lost to friction, okay, or due to viscosity. Okay, so, so anyway, so we lose that energy here. As we're coming down here, we lose that energy. And then, um, well, let's, let's draw the rest of this as if we didn't lose that energy. Okay, and the reason that I'm going to do that is just to be consistent with the books of drawing. Okay, I'm going to expect you to... Um, yeah, I'm going to expect you to know that there's an energy loss right there. Let me just erase... Um, so like right here. Okay, so normally there's an energy loss right there, but the, the book is not accounting for that. So then what's going to happen is all along this pipe, we're going to lose energy. Let's, why are you doing this to me? Okay, what? Get out of here, jerk. Okay, so... Um, I don't think you'll be able to see all these windows that pop up when I'm working. Anyway, so all along this pipe, we're losing energy, and we're losing energy at a constant rate, okay? Because the pipe is constant width, okay? And we're assuming it's made of concrete or the whole way or whatever it's made out of. Maybe it's made out of plastic or glass, but nothing's changing. Okay, now it gets to the end. Now, one thing, one question might be, well, how do I know what slope to give it? Why did I give it that slope and not this slope or that slope? And one of the ways to, that we figure that out is we go to the end here. And if I go right here, right, I can kind of figure out what my, where my total energy is going to be at the end, right? And so here's my Z. Like, all right, there's my Z. And then this right here, well, there's no pressure. P on gamma is zero at, at this point, right? We know that because it's going out into the atmosphere. So that leaves this little bit right here, which is V squared on 2G. Okay, so that's all three, all my three terms, right? This one doesn't, you know, pressure doesn't count, Z is accounted for, and V on two squared. So that's why we add, we aim for that spot right there. Okay, and that's all we do to get the EGL. Okay, sometimes it'll get more complicated. Obviously, there's a pump or a turbine that's going to add or subtract energy, um, but the EGL has to go down, and as it moves in the direction of the flow, the only time it can go up only time it can ever go up in the direction of the flow is if there's a pump. Okay, if there's no pump, you cannot do that. All right, so now um, we will, let's talk about the HDL, which I'm going to do in another color. I'm going to do green. Um, and so the difference between the EGL and the HDL, what I, you know, what I wrote down earlier is that, you know, because the EGL, just as a reminder, EGL equals... P on gamma plus Z plus V squared on 2G. Well, the HGL is P on gamma plus Z, okay? So the only difference between the two of them is this thing right here, okay, is the V squared on 2G. Now, notice this pipe has a constant diameter. Oh, I've already said that, okay? It's got a constant width. So because of that, that's going to be constant, which means the difference, the the distance between the HDL and the EGL will also be constant, okay? The, the, I don't know how to write that, but the um, EGL minus HGL equals V squared on 2G, which is the same the whole way down. So it's going to be the same right here as it is right here, 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 all the way down. So once you figure out about what you think that HGL, what that distance is, which of course we kind of defined down here already, right? Okay, we defined it here. So now it's gotta be that way all the way up to here. Okay, so these lines are gonna be parallel, which happens sometimes, okay, frequently, but not always. Okay, so our HDL is basically just gonna follow that one all the way down. Okay, now you might say, well, what's going on right here? What's going on right there? Okay, what's all this business? Okay, that, now usually it, when I draw it, I just draw it kind of like a straight down and then it goes like this, but you can draw it on an angle if you want. Um, the book drew it on an angle, which is probably more correct. And what that is trying to get at is the acceleration of the flow here, right? Because 
right when it starts somewhere in, somewhere in here, the velocity is zero somewhere. And then somewhere over here, the velocity is, you know, whatever the velocity is in the pipe. Okay, so this is just kind of dealing with that transition. Okay, so um, hopefully, you know, now that I've scribbled all over this, <laughs> uh, hopefully this is, you know, hopefully this makes some sense. Um, we're going to do uh, a number of these. So um, let's, um, oh, once again, notice, okay, before I move completely on, um, notice, and I think this is really important, okay, v squared on 2g is constant the whole way. Okay, that distance is the same the whole way. Our z is the same the whole way. So all moving down this pipe, what's happening? The p on gamma is decreasing. Okay, and that means the pressure is decreasing. Which, of course, makes sense because the pressure is zero right here. And the pressure right here is gamma times this, you know, whatever this depth is right here. Uh, capital D. Okay, so basically the pressure, the pressure is driving the flow from... And it's pushing from gamma D on one side to zero on the other side. And so it's driving it to the right. Okay, driving it to the right. Okay. And the only reason it doesn't accelerate, you know, uh, infinitely is because we've got friction pushing against it. Okay. And the friction, of course, is accounted for in the head loss. Now, if you wanted to know how much energy we lost due to head, well, that's right here. Look, we've, we started with this amount of energy. And we ended up with this amount of energy. That's our head loss. Okay. Not insignificant. Not insignificant at all. Okay. The only thing we were left with was some elevation and a little bit of velocity. Okay. So, all right. So let's go. And we're going we're gonna to kind of do this for all of these. Okay. So here's a pump. Pumps are cool. Uh, for a lot of reasons. Oh, look, they did they did the solid line and the dotted line. I don't know why they did it on the last one. Okay, so here's a pipe. Um, this pipe has an area of, I don't know, A1. This one, this pipe has an area of A1. Okay, so what I'm saying is that the pipe areas are constant. Okay, so what that means is here we go. We're, we're losing energy. We're moving down this pipe, right? We're move, We're losing energy as we go. Okay. Some engineers, some clever engineers, like, oh my God, our total energy is low. So what do we do? Well, we're going to add a pump. Okay, this is the only way um, that the EGL will ever go up. Okay, the HGL can go up. The HGL can do all kinds of crazy things, but the EGL can only go down unless there's a pump. Okay, and, and I'm going to say that probably on every single one of these, but it can only go down in the direction of the flow unless there's a pump, because the pump is going to. It's you know. Uh, What's the law of conservation of energy? You know, uh, matter cannot be created nor destroyed, only transferred from one form to another. Well, in this case, as we're, we're losing energy, and we're not really losing it, but it's being transferred to heat, okay? And the amount we're losing is called head loss, okay? Or the amount that's transferred. All right, so we get this, this thing right here, and that is HP, okay? That's pretty cool, right? So the so the, the HP, which we measure in feet, is, is directly applicable on these diagrams, okay? Now, once we get up here, we're going to start losing energy again because we're in a pipe. Okay, cool, All right? Okay, notice the slope over here. The slope at which we're losing is the same as the slope over here, okay? And there's a reason for that. Um, and it has to do with the fact that, and this is, this is the other thing that, that is kind of really important. The velocity here is the same as the velocity here. Okay, and this is a, a common misconception because there's a pump right here. And so what you want to think is you want to think like, oh, it's going to come out faster than it went in. Okay, but if we did that, then it would violate continuity. So we need Q in to be equal to Q out, okay? If it were coming out faster than it was going in, then, uh, well, we would run out of, like then right in here, um, it would run out of fluid or something. Um, it, just, it just can't happen, okay? So, and, and we know that since the areas are constant, then therefore the, you know, V1 equals V2. If this is a point like one, this is a point two. Okay, so the velocities are constant. Okay, and so this is a common misconception. You have a pipe, you have a pump, the velocities are constant. 
Okay, and so that's shown here, v squared on 2g. v squared on 2g. Constant on both sides. Okay? So the rate at which you lose energy is primarily a function of that velocity. Okay, and since, and you know, we haven't really gotten into that, but basically this, the slope is the same because v squared on 2g is constant. Okay? And you might say, well, that's not the only thing that matters. And you're right, the roughness of the pipe uh, matters. Uh, but we're going to assume right now, um, or the way this is drawn, the roughness of the pipe is, uh, is constant. Uh, okay, so now let's get at, well, let's, let's, we want to know the HDL. Well, the HDL is pretty easy to get at, okay, once you have the EGL. The EGL is always going to be V squared on 2G below the HDL. And v squared on 2g is constant because it's a constant diameter pipe, so so they just kind of we're just going to kind of dot it in. Sweet. Okay, so um, I can't really see those dots, so let me just draw it um, like that. Okay, so that's how you do an HGL EGL every time. Think about the EGL, think about what happens, and then once you get the EGL drawn, then back up and do the HGL. Okay, now I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this for every single one of them um, because I think it's important. Um, here's a datum somewhere down here. That's a datum. Datum. Okay, notice here's Z. Okay, here's Z. Okay, V squared on 2G is, is plotted. That is this right here. That's V squared on 2G. Okay, notice it is constant. Okay. And then what's left over? What do we have in here? Well, we've got um, P on gamma. We have P on gamma. Okay, P on gamma, which is the hardest term. Kind of requires you to write everything else. So notice the pressure decreases as we're moving along, decreases. Okay, so the effect of the head loss is really to cause us to lose pressure. And then we get to the pump. And look, the pressure jumps. We get a lot more pressure on this side of the pipe. Okay, so the energy that the pump gave in this case, and in most cases, I can't think of a case when it's not the case, true, is in terms of P on gamma. Okay, so that's, um, that's how we do these. Okay, so let's, um, let's keep moving. Oh, this is cool. Okay, so um, somebody was thinking about installing a turbine. And so they thought to themselves, well, look at this. I've got this reservoir. So if I've got a datum down here, this is the datum. And here's my reservoir. By having the reservoir really high up on top of the hill, I've got a Z. Okay, and that's all of my energy is in, is in Z. Okay, potential energy. Okay. And I could say, I could add P on gamma, which is zero, and V squared on 2G, which is also zero. So we don't even really wor need to worry about that. So when drawing this, what we're going to do is we're going to think about only the energy grade line. So here's the energy grade line. So that's everything. And I'm not even going to think about the individual terms. I'm just going to think about what happens. Well, there's going to be a little bit of energy loss right here, which the book didn't draw. I'm going to ask you to draw it. There's a turbine right here. Okay, so there's going to be a big loss of energy right there. Okay, and then we've got this, we've got some energy loss going on here and something weird in this expansion, okay, which uh, the book explains right here, um, and I'll talk you through that in a second. All right, so now we're going to go, and um, the book does not account for that, so we're going to ignore it, okay, for now, and you're just kind of losing energy as you go, okay? Now, how do you figure out what the slope of this line should be? Well, on a test, um, there are ways to, to quantify what the slope should be. Um, but on the test, you just have to kind of think about it a little bit. Now, you could have drawn this steeper or less steep, and it would be fine as long as you don't end up in a bad place. Okay, and I'll explain what a bad place is in a second. Okay, so we just draw like you're slowly losing energy. Okay, and the, and the slope of the line is constant because area of the, of the pipe is constant, so it's, you know, so it's constant velocity, and so the rate at which you're losing energy is constant through the whole length of that pipe. Okay, when we get here, there's a turbine, and remember, a turbine removes energy from the flow, so you're going to remove a ton of energy, 
Okay, HT. Okay, that's the length of that line is HT. Okay, and so I think, um, you know, I think we can, you know, imagine, um, you know, I think you can see right now one of the reasons why uh, we don't want, you know, we want to eliminate as much head loss as possible is that that line, the bigger that line is, the more energy we were able to extract from the flow, right? And so if, so if this is kind of more or less flat, okay, this is the amount of energy we lost to the head loss, right? And so you can imagine if that number is bigger, so if that number were down here, then we would have less for the turbine, okay? And then you wouldn't get as much out of the flow. So it's important to try to minimize your head loss so that you can um, get at that energy. All right, so once we get there, now we have to think about, well, what's the head loss right in here? What's the rate at which we're losing energy? Okay, and so um, this is actually interesting. They don't, they don't draw this big enough that we can see it. So I'm gonna take this right here, and I'm gonna blow it up. Okay, so let's blow it up down here. Um, or wherever. Or you know what, actually I can zoom all the way in and, and just do it on there, can't I? Okay, so they didn't do a very good job with this drawing. Okay, let me, no, 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 no I don't want to undo that, I want to erase. Okay, so let's get rid of this. Okay, so this is kind of an important point. There, There's better places to work on this but this will have to do. Okay, so this is the, the turbine. So once we get here, what's gonna happen is this. Okay, um, and I'm gonna, we're gonna ignore their line. We're gonna start from about right here. Okay, is that right here, okay, narrow pipe. Means we're gonna lose energy quickly, which means the slope of the line is gonna be steep. Okay, right here, wide pipe. Okay, which means the rate at which we lose will be less steep, okay? So if you put those two together, and if we exaggerate it a little bit so that we can see it, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna start you know, up here, but we're gonna exaggerate it. And so you will need to do this on a test, um, but I'm just gonna kinda ask you to um, you know, do the best you can. And if you need to, you can draw a little arrow and tell me which way it's supposed to be concave. But this, these two things, if you combine them, it has a shape like that. Okay, so we're gonna have a shape like that. Okay, and so what I'm gonna ask you to do on a test, if, you, if you're not a good drawer, which you know not a lot of us are, some of, well, you know, we all can, right? So if you're on a test and you're like, well, I don't really know how to draw that, you draw this and you say concave up. Okay, and that way I'll know what, you, what you're going for, okay? And so narrower pipes, uh, because V squared on 2G is high, they're gonna lose energy faster than wide pipes, which V squared on 2G are, is smaller, so they're not gonna lose energy as fast. Okay, now once you get here, what's gonna happen is there's going to be a loss, okay? And this is gonna be a head loss. Um, and we're gonna call this a head loss due to an exit. Okay, and um, if you wanna know, um, what the um, what that head loss is, how big it is, is um, well. Let's um. I'm gonna make this more general. So for any time there's an expansion. Okay, and you could think of this as an expansion. Um, where the where the flow is going from the pipe out into something much much bigger. Okay, so this is gonna be head loss for any expansion. It's gonna be uh, V1, so V1 is, I guess, in, in this part, and V2 is over here, so V2 and this will be one. Okay, V1, um, hold on, let me pause for a second. Okay, got it, uh, V1 minus V2 on 2G squared. Okay, so when you're going into a big tank, V2 is zero, right? So this becomes the velocity in the pipe squared uh, over, uh, over um, 2G. Okay, so it just becomes 
v squared on 2g in this case. Okay, so that's what this is. Okay, that's how much energy we lost. Okay, so now we have to go back and we're going to do, oh, well, we do have a problem here. Um, this thing needed to come in a little bit closer. Um, I'm going to just I'm going to redraw it real quick. It's not going to change anything substantially. Um, okay, so we're just going to make that pretty small. Okay, and this is v squared on 2g. Okay, and the reason that I redrew that is um, I wanted to, as much as possible, to make it in scale with, because you can see how fat this pipe is right here. Um, you can see how fat this pipe is right here. So the velocity head is going to be very small right here. And I want it to be smaller than what's up here. And I didn't really do a good enough job, but this right here should be small. Okay, because the pipe is so fat. Okay, no, no offense pipe, I, you know, this isn't social shaming. All right, so then, um, so let's then do the HDL. And the HDL in this case, like in all cases, is pretty straightforward. You just have to figure out what V squared on 2G is. Okay, and so you're just gonna subtract that off. Okay, notice this pipe is a constant diameter. Okay, the whole way. Okay, so that means the V squared on 2G is just gonna be some distance below that line the whole way. Okay. Even down here, when it comes out the turbine, it's a very narrow pipe. So what's going to happen is uh, V squared on 2G is going to start by being, let's go, let's zoom all the way in. Okay. V squared, I mean, it's hard to tell what's going on exactly with these um, conditions and everything. But, um, but the, um, the HGL is going to drop. Okay. And when it gets here, it's going to start by being, you know, because this is a very narrow pipe, so it's going to start by being, you know, V squared on 2G is going to start fairly large. Okay, again, remember I'm ignoring the book's lines here. Um, and what's going to happen is, um, I'm actually going to um, exaggerate that a little bit more. Um, come here. Okay. Is that this thing is going to go down maybe to here even. And what's going to happen is, as this area gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this thing is going to kind of go like that. Okay, until it ends up at a place like right at the surface. Okay, and so this is our head loss because of the velocity. And the HGL is going to come right to the surface. Okay, and it has to. Okay. Notice uh, the pressure here. So if we if we do our thing where I, that I was telling you I was going to do on all of them, um, and we back up, and we think about um, notice. So here's our z, right here is from the datum, all the way up to here. There's our z. Okay, our pressure is really tiny right there. Okay, our z is still right here, and notice the pressure increased. Okay, so we've actually got an inverse pressure gradient. The pressure is pushing back on us. Okay. Now the flow is still going to the right, um, basically because it has momentum. Um, so yeah, that's kind of interesting. I hadn't really thought about that. Um, so let's go um, here, and you can see all moving along here. Well, look, they put the datum right here, but let's ignore their datum. Let's use my datum. Okay. Here's the datum to this spot. Here's p on gamma. And here is uh, V squared on 2G, okay? So again, V squared on 2G, constant all along here. Okay, the Z, we're slowly losing Z, right? Z is decreasing greatly. And as we lose Z, pressure is increasing tremendously, right? We just keep gaining pressure. And that's because we're moving downwards in the flow, okay? So P on gamma is gaining at the expense of Z, okay? And of course, the head loss, of course, keeps in, improve, increasing. But um, this is a very common thing. This is like, this is hydrostatics 101, right? Very common. Okay, the turbine essentially stole a bunch of pressure from the fluid. And in fact, made the pressure gradient um, negative. Okay, dropped it below zero, it looks like almost. Well, not below. Eh. Yeah, we have to think about that. Okay, anyway, uh, next one. 
So let's see what else we got. Oh yeah, so you should have started, or I wonder if any, how many of you guys thought, well, what if, what happens if things are a little bit different? What happens if things are a little wonky? All right, this is a wonky example. Okay, so I've got this pipe and the pipe goes up and down. Okay, so the fluid comes and it flows and it does this. Okay, and you're like, all right, all right, all right. Okay, so there's gonna be head loss right here, but the book doesn't do that. So we're just gonna, you know, we're gonna ignore that head loss because the book is dumb. Okay, I'm gonna expect you to know there's a head loss there. Um, and I'll show you how to, how to deal with that uh, on the last examples. And you're like, okay, well, as we're moving along the pipe, like, well, let's, let's get our start point and our end point. Okay, here's our, oh, look, they've got a Z. Right here, Z is zero. There's our datum. And I'm gonna to go to this end point right here because that kind of helps me draw. Okay, here's Z. And then there's gonna be some V squared on 2G, okay, because the pipe is, the water's flowing out into the atmosphere. P on gamma over here is zero. Okay, so I, I picked a point somewhere above the exit that's gonna count for V squared on 2G. Okay, now I'm gonna go over to the start. The start, well, we know that this is both the HGL and the EGL. That's like a given, and that's super easy. Okay, now to go between those two, the pipe has a constant diameter. So V squared on 2G, well, we don't even care about V squared on 2G, but the head loss is gonna be constant. The rate of head loss is gonna be constant. So I'm just gonna draw. I'm not gonna get confused by the fact that this pipe is doing all this crazy business. Okay, which is, you know, we like crazy business. Just not, no, don't do that, punk. Okay, so we're just gonna kinda draw the line. Okay, constant downward slope, we're losing energy the whole way. There's no pumps, there's no turbines, nothing really weird going on here. Cool. Okay, now we're gonna do, what about the HDL? Well, the HDL, once we have that, we just have to figure out, you know, where is it? Well, that depends on V squared on 2G. Okay, well, the pipe here is constant diameter. So V squared on 2G is constant. Okay, so first we're gonna go, we're gonna drop because right here, well, because here V is zero. And then all of a sudden we get here and we've got some velocity. So V squared on 2G is this distance and it's gonna remain the same the whole way. These are always easy to draw when they're already drawn for you, such as life. Okay, so you can see that V squared on 2G. Cool, right? Right? All right, so now, and I mean, I think you've already, you've probably already noticed this, this thing right here, this negative P on gamma. But notice, look, this is Z. Um, Z, 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 uh-oh. Uh-oh, what's going on here? Z is, Z is going really high here. Oh, Z's back in the area where we like. So over here, uh, Z is... Um, Z is a very happy thing. And then above that, we've got V squared on 2G. But notice, what about the pressure? Okay, because the pressure, the pressure in this case, so Z, like, um, let's, let's get rid of all this noise. We don't really need all of this business. Um, where's the eraser? This is all in the way. Everything here. Oh, we could, we could use the datum. Uh, it's a little sloppy, but whatever. All right. So notice, okay, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to focus you in on the HGL, which of course I just drew all over, but or I just erased. But here's the EGL. I mean, excuse me, the HGL. So that's the HGL. Okay, and I want you to remember that the HGL equals uh, P on gamma plus Z. Okay, so when Z is above the HGL, as happens in this whole middle portion here, so you can see where the, the Z is measuring to the middle area of this pipe. So you can see all the way in here, okay, P on gamma is above the HGL. It's not PGL, uh, Z is above, the, is above the HGL. So if Z is above the HGL, then the pressure all through here, oh, that is way too thick. And the pressure all through here is negative. Okay. 
And that should kind of give you a visual and help you to understand why many times, almost always, the lowest pressure in the system is at the highest point. Okay, not always. I mean, you know, if the, if the pipe were changing uh, diameter or something along those lines, then things can happen. But um, almost always, you look for that highest point. You look for that kink, okay, that, that high point. And usually that's where the lowest pressure. And what you would normally do is you would take this negative thing, and one of the things to consider is, will this cavitate? Okay. okay, you've got negative pressure, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to cavitate. It just means it's below atmospheric. So the pressure here at this point is less than the pressure here because the pressure here is zero. Okay, which means there's an adverse pressure gradient going this way. Okay, however, also gravity is going the other way. So, um, so they're kind of balancing each other. All right, so that's, uh, that's kind of the idea here. So just be aware that you can end up with negative values here. And this, to me, is the most confusing one of all of these. Um, let's see, we're at 56 minutes. And what do we have left? Okay, uh, what is this? Oh, yeah. Okay, so this is an exit. Okay, again, um, this is kind of a special case. Um, EGL, we're cruising along, cruising, well, okay. So I always like to, so this is an exit right here. It's not really very well drawn, but I always like to think about these in terms of like, let's figure out where I'm going to end up. Okay, so if I'm drawing my EGL, one of the easy things is to go, okay, well, here's Z. Okay, Z is the easiest. Okay, do I have any pressure right here? I don't have any pressure there. Okay, so on this end, P on gamma equals zero. And then what's V squared on 2G? Well, um, we're just going to draw it up to here. Fine. Okay, V squared on 2G. Cool. Okay, now let's go back over here to the beginning. Here's Z. Okay, we've got some pressure, but well, whatever. We're just gonna we're gonna just say the EGL is right here. Okay, why not? Okay, so that kind of helps me figure out where I'm gonna end up. And when I sketch these, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll just kind of like draw a line roughly like that, and it just kind of tells me what I'm doing. Okay, I, I don't need I don't want to do that right now because of course I can see what this line is gonna do. But you can see that this pipe is contracting. And as it contracts, V squared on 2G is going to increase. Okay. Also, two things are going to happen. Well, let's, let's focus on, sorry, let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, okay, so the steepness of this line, okay, over here, it's not going to be very steep for the EGL. Why? Because we have a fat pipe. Okay, fat pipe means lower, lo, slower, slower moving water, less frictional. Okay, over here, we've got a narrow pipe. Okay, and so the EGL is gonna be, it's gonna be steeper. Let's, let's go ahead and exaggerate that. Um, so over here, the EGL will be like this. Okay, so what's going to happen is we're gonna cruise along at a very low slope, and then we're gonna concave downwards. Okay, concave downwards. Okay, because we're losing energy um, faster here because the, because the velocity increased. Okay, so now we've got V squared on 2G right here, and we've got Z here. Okay, now over here, we want to get our HGL. Okay, and all we have to do is think about, well, what is V squared on 2G? Well, right here, V squared on 2G looks like this. Okay, over here... Arbitrarily, we're just going to choose some distance like this. Okay, now this distance has to be less than that. This distance has to be less than that distance because it's not going as fast, right? And so as we approach, okay, the distance between these two lines will increase because the area is going to decrease. Okay, so V squared on 2G increases. Okay. Now notice uh, that increase in velocity, it comes at the expense of pressure. Okay, notice because here's our pressure, P on gamma, P on gamma. Now we're, we're losing P on gamma from here to here due to head loss, right? But then as we get into here, we're losing it because the energy, I mean, there's still some head loss, but we're losing it because, well, sorry, these should be going down to the center line of the pipe. Okay, we're losing it because the velocity head is, the velocity is increasing and taking, essentially, from the pressure, okay? All right. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, okay. 
So this is nothing we haven't seen so far yet. Okay, again, we draw these all the same way. Um, so notice, okay, wide pipe, pipe, narrow pipe. Well, if I could write narrow, okay. This means V squared on 2G is large. This means V squared on 2G is small. Okay, this also means the head loss will be slow. And over here, the head loss will be fast. Okay, meaning steep line, shallow line. Okay, so let's, um, let's start into this. Okay, so there's a head loss right here. The book ignores that, so we're going to ignore that for now. I'll show you how to deal with that shortly. There's a head loss right here. Okay, technically there's a head loss right in here. Um, as the pipes kind of uh, change from one to another, uh, we're not going to. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Okay, I um, just ignore that. Okay, um, usually there'll be like a table with some kind of special constants that you would look up to help you figure out how much loss you you have there, and so we'll deal with that when we get there. All right, so we're going to start here, and HGL and EGL start here, and then I'm moving along the pipe from left to right. Okay, by the way, these always confuse me when they go from right to left. But um, And so we're going to lose energy, right? And the rate at which we lose energy, right here, we're going to lose energy slowly. So the slope of this line is going to be shallow, but it's still downwards because we always lose energy. We always go downwards unless there's a pump. Okay, That's the only thing that can happen. Okay, So now we get to this transition point, okay? and we're going to lose, and we're going to lose energy faster because the pipe is narrow, and so, you know, because it's narrow, we're going to lose, you know, the fluid's going to move faster, and so we're going to lose more energy, okay? Now, where am I aiming for? Well, I know there's going to be a head loss right here. I know the EGL is right here on this end, so I need some distance above this, which, remember, the head loss in an outlet is V squared on 2G, okay, from what we did a slide or three ago. Okay, so this distance is going to be v squared on 2g, um, like right there, like barely inside that pipe. And so I'm just going to aim for that spot, you know, some spot somewhere above that, um, that water surface. Okay? All right, now we have to figure out um, what about the HGO? Okay, so remember over here, v squared on 2g is small. Over here, V squared on 2G is large. Okay, that means that this distance right here is going to be large, and this distance right here is going to be small. And that pretty much defines how you um, solve this. So over here, the two lines are very close together because there is a wide pipe. Over here, the two lines are very, uh, very far apart because of the narrow pipe. Now, notice that the HGL comes in right at that surface, okay, as it almost always does, okay. Now the conversion from one to another, this is a, uh, is a concave line because, um, well, two things are happening. One, the EGL is concaving downwards, so this is responding to that, but also uh, this is narrowing. So uh, as it narrows, this is going to concave. So I would have actually have drawn this more like, um, let me kind of do it in red, how I would have actually drawn this. It would have been more like that. And this would be concave down. Okay, that's about how I would have drawn it. I'm sure, I'm sure the book strong is more uh, precise, um, but you know, um, about what I just did is what I would expect you to do on a test. Okay, so let's see. Come here. Let's go. Okay, so here we actually get to work one. Um, and I'm going to kind of show you uh, my methods. We're going to work two of these. Um, hopefully this will not take 10 minutes. But um, All right. So I'm going to do EGLs first. Okay, EGL right here. Boom. This is the starting point. Here's the ending point. Okay. Now I'm going to come in here in red, and I'm going to show you everywhere where there's a head loss. Head loss. Uh, there could be one here. We're going to ignore that because um, I don't feel like uh, doing that. But 
Head loss here because there's an expansion. Head loss here for a kind of contraction. And head loss here for another expansion. Okay. So those are the things we've got to deal with. All right. So let's go here. All right. So we also note um, the rate at which we're losing energy. Okay. So the head loss, I'm just going to kind of do a little, let me undo that. I'm going to do head loss. I'm going to create a little chart kind of demonstrating the rate at which we're losing energy. Okay, this one right here, this is this one right here, that is the fattest pipe. Okay, so in there, the line is almost going to be flat. It's going to barely be down. Okay, this is the narrowest pipe. Okay, so in there, it's going to be like this. Okay, this one is, uh, well, this one is the second narrowest. So the rate of head loss there will be like this. And in here, it's going to be, I don't know, somewhere in the middle. So maybe like that. Okay, so kind of hard to see, but this is all based on, uh, you know, um, V squared on 2G. Okay, so where, so where the pipe is narrow um, is where we're going to lose the most head. Okay, so, so basically narrow equals steep. E G L. Okay, so in other words, we're going to start here and we're going to just start losing energy, right, at some constant rate. Now we hit a pump. The pump is going to give us a ton of energy. Okay, so we hit the pump and the pump's going to give us. Okay, don't be bashful. I did this because it gives me space. Okay, I recommend doing that. Okay, so now we're going to go. Oh, here we go. I'm going to try to go down like this. Now the slope here and the slope here should be the same if I'm doing this right. So now we're going to get into this narrow pipe here. Okay, and so it's going to go concave downwards. Okay, it's only going to be curving right in that area. And then now it's going to go until it gets right here. Okay, so now we've got a little bit of head loss. Um, I'm going to do this, this head loss in, oh no, okay, I forgot the first head loss, let's go all the way back, okay, this won't take very long, okay, first head loss, boom, we go downwards a little bit, how much, that's up to you, okay, this is a qualitative drawing, we go down a little bit, okay, now we're going to go down at a constant rate, we're going to hit the pump, pump's going to go up, okay, that gives us a little room to work, go down here, until um, we get to like this point right here. Okay, now we're gonna go concave. Okay, until we get to about there. And now we're going to be, well, it's not very good. You know, perfection can be a real problem. Okay, so, um, so we go to about right there. So it's not gonna be concave very long. Okay, and now it's gonna be steeper until it gets about right there. Okay, so here we go up here. Okay, when it gets there, there's a little head loss right here associated with this that little red circle. Now this thing is a nice fat pipe. We're not going to lose energy very fast. Okay, so then you're like, okay, well that's cool. Then we're cruising along, and then we're going to get to this. Now we've got another little head loss. Okay, so we're going to lose a little bit more energy. Okay, now this line will have. Now at this point, you got to start thinking about where do we want this thing to end up. So the little head loss right here, and that head loss is equal to V squared on 2G. Remember that. So we've got to think about roughly about the slope of the line we want like that. Okay. And so what you might do is you might say slope steepness. Okay, one, two, three, four. Uh, this is the steepest. This is the second steepest. Uh, this is the third steepest, and this is the flattest, right? You might do that to help you with the, you know, the drawing if it, you know, if it's hard to tell. Okay, cool. All right, so now we would go, all right, now let's do the um, HGL. HGL. Okay, okay. so, so HGL, HGL, all we have, all to, we have to do, do is think about, think about the pressure. Okay, so just think, I mean, not the pressure, the velocity head. Okay, so the velocity head looks like V squared on 2G. Okay, and we want to think about where is the velocity head the biggest. Okay, well, the velocity head is the biggest 
um, in this narrowest pipe, right? So that's the fastest velocity, okay? So that means this distance, v squared on 2g, is going to be big, okay? It'll be smaller right here because that's the next biggest pipe. It'll be smaller over here because that's the next biggest pipe. And then in here, it's going to be tiny, okay? So all through here, right, it's just going to be like some constant distance, okay? If I'm going to kind of apply that distance up here as best I can, okay? And then we're going to go up here, and it's going to be kind of that same sort of thing. And then over here, let's see, it's going to be pretty gnarly because it's, it's just cruising through that pipe like this. I want it to be parallel. Let me undo that. Okay, so it's going to be like cruising. Ah, I can't draw parallel to save my life. Whatever, something. Right, and in between those two, this is going to go like this. Okay, concave downwards. Okay, noting that right here I'm trying to match this. Okay, and then all of a sudden, well, what happens here? It's small, so what's going to happen is this weird, we get this little bump right here. Okay, because, and well, if we ignore that bump, right, don't get confused by the bump. The only thing I need to know is I just need to reproduce this. Okay, so it's like this. Okay, so what has to happen right here is there's that. There's a big increase in pressure right here at that point. Okay, now over here, um, it's going to, the velocity head is going to be like this, which means basically I've drawn this all wrong because it's supposed to be like that, okay? So um, let's draw it like that. Now that it's supposed to be like this in order to keep my sizes correct. So, um, well, yeah, so at this point you go in and you say, well, V squared on 2G, uh, this is the biggest one. Um, this is the second biggest one, this is the third biggest one, and this is the smallest, right? And so you go, well, this is one, two, uh, three, it's here and here, and then four right here. Wait, is that right? Why are the twos and threes in different spots? Oh, I see, I made a mistake earlier. Okay, so my slopes, this should have been a three, this should have been a three, right, and this should have been a two. Okay, so this should be a two, and this should be a three for the slope, and this should be a three for the slope. Okay, I guess it was because I was trying to read these lines, I couldn't really tell. Okay, so that's, uh, that's kind of how you do it. Um, if things get a little bit confusing, just kind of label it, you know. Um, it's, it really helps to have a pencil. Uh, so you can kind of sketch things out a little bit easier, okay? And so hopefully this last one, okay, we're right up against the clock here, okay? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you where the head losses are before we begin. We'll do that in red. Head loss here, head loss here, all along this pipe, all along this pipe, okay? So that's where there's head loss. All right, so EGL is here, boom. Okay, gonna be a little head loss right here. I'm gonna undo that. Uh, there's not really a lot of room to work with on this one. Okay, and it's gonna have to end up at a place where um, there's going to be V squared on 2G, okay? Above like the exit there. Well then, wait a second. There's also pressure right there, isn't there? Yeah, let me go ahead and undo. Come on, punk. Okay, so above that spot, there's going to be some V squared on 2G. Okay, so, um, so we have to account for that. So we're going to go, now notice, um, head loss rate, okay, is going to start slow, okay, because it's a fat pipe. And over here, and then over here, by the time we get to the end, it's going to be steep. Okay, so this is going to be a curvy line going downwards. Okay, so it's going to be like that. Actually, that's not too bad. Okay, 
So now we got to do um, okay, now v squared on 2g. Notice, okay, it starts small and it gets larger. Okay, so over here it might be very close to that line. Over here it's much further away. And in fact, we already kind of described where it went, but it's going to get further away from that line, so it's going to be even more concave than the line above it. Okay, so notice um, right here, from here to there, that's P on gamma, right? And we've still got Z going right through the middle here. So that's Z down to some imaginary datum. All right, so everywhere along here, you can figure out, oh, what's the pressure? Oh, well, it's, it's this thing right here, P on gamma. Right, what's the velocity head? It's right here. The velocity head is most right over here. The pressure is most over here. The Z is the same everywhere. Anyway, um, that's it. Uh, we're a minute over. Um, thanks, guys. Thanks for your attention. Um, I know this is a long lecture. Um, again, remember, take care of yourself mentally, emotionally, all that other stuff. Um, I'd say have a great weekend, but it's Tuesday. And good luck on the test next week. I'll post some stuff online uh, to kind of give you a primer about how we're going to do it. All right, uh, take it easy. Take care of yourselves, mental, emotional, all of that. Talk to you later.